All right, we're about ready. Do we want to close doors? Ian, you want to get that back door? So. Well, I'm kind of excited. Some people showed up. <laughs> I'm still a little bit waking up, but that's okay. Thank you. Okay, good morning, everybody. I didn't mean to interrupt. Um, so my name's Edis. I am from Klamath Community College. I am the Center for Teaching and Learning lead there. Um, I'm also an instructional innovation trainer. Just means that I teach faculty how to use technology. I'm a little bit intimidated because I've been hearing about her presentation. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, sorry. it was not just you. It was other people coming in and saying yeah. something. So, so I may not be yeah, as exciting and as engaging, but we'll try. <laughs> and so. Yeah. So, well, right you know, now. this is the first time we're doing this, so I'm really kind of excited. Um, so we are actually a brand new Center for Teaching and Learning team. We've only been doing, uh, this is my instructional designer, David, and then Ian's our, our LMS administrator. And we've been there, well, I've been there the longest since March of last year, and these guys came in a little bit later. But, uh, so we came into a, a situation like, oh my gosh, what are we doing here? So, so now we're, we're kind of caught up, and while we were there, so we both, we all have educational background, and you know, we, we're starting to see things that are having, that were problems and stuff, so, and I should get out my, my cheat sheet while I'm talking to you guys, too. Um, so, we have no onboarding process for our faculty. Faculty come in, they go to HR, they sign their FERPA paper, they don't even get told what it is, basically. You know, they get a five minute, read this, now sign it, and now you know what FERPA is. Then, you know, we have, what else, mandatory reportings, and um, how to be a teacher. You know, some of these instructors, especially the adjuncts that come in, they are brand new teachers. And we just say, hey, here's the classroom, get started. Here's, can yeah, here's Canvas, <laughs> yeah. your course. Well, we didn't even yeah. give them Canvas yeah. training. That was like kind of our first step. So we have Canvas as our own mess. Well, we expect them to have something on Canvas by the time they start. Yes. Teaching. So um, just a little overview of Klamath Community College. We're 23 years young. Um, we started as a little trailer down the road from a dump. <laughs> or a transfer station, I should say, a demolition transfer station. Um, and since then, we now have nine buildings. Um, our, our current president has been with us since 2012. He's amazing. Uh, has Since he's been there, we've added, so we were at six buildings at the time that he started. We're up to nine buildings. We're looking at adding a tent. So we're also growing with faculty. So again, one of the problems we found while we were as the Center for Teaching and Learning is, as our faculty were going into the classroom unprepared. They're, again, here, here's your computer, get started. Boom. And, you know, we'll give you a few seconds of going over Canvas. So what we're finding is, you know, faculty are coming in and saying, what's expected of me? I don't know what to do. Where do I go for help? What do I, you know, all the questions, who, what, why, where, when, right? What do I do after meeting with HR and the deans? Half the time, they just meet with the deans, you know, and HR, like I said, with the FERPA paperwork, and then they meet their deans, and their deans say, here's your lead, here's your mentor. Again, have at it. You know, and it is frustrating. And, and uh, David and I are both adjunct. We have the, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, um, advantage of being part of the Center for Teaching and Learning team, so we already know some of these tips and tricks. So we were kind of finding, you know, faculty were struggling where we were already succeeding and we didn't, you know, we kind of were getting the clue of what's going on there. Well, there was a point where I was asked to teach a couple weeks before the semester began, and at one point during the semester, I had a helicopter parent who descended, decided to descend on me. And you know, meetings with them, and as an adjunct new to the college and not having taught in Texas before, I get this helicopter parent that's just kind of, you know, uh, and found out, had to have a meeting with her, invited, turns out the student was from a high school, had to get the K through 12 coordinator involved. And found out that I didn't call the dean, so at that point I got yelled at by the dean, telling me that you know you're my employee, you better let me know. And it's like, 
Did anybody tell me? So this is common, right? I think we all experience this. It's especially worse for adjuncts. It is. It is very much so. So again, you know, other questions that have come up. Well, I didn't even know where to go for support. I needed help with this. I needed help with that. We had no no binders, no handbook or anything that the faculty were aware of. Um, and we also had no formal training. So one of the things, this keeps jumping on me. I think it's just the way it is. Um, one of the things that we started doing when we first became a team, uh, this team here, is we started having the faculty come in and talk to us about Canvas. That's the only thing we focused on. Here, let's get you started on Canvas. We'll help you get started. I started going, um, they they started a wellness program, ugh, program at KCC. And one of the instructors who's an adjunct, um, she she was the lead for that. She's our wellness coordinator. So I would walk with her and she'd say, how do I do this? Who do I see for this? What happens with this? I don't even know how to teach and I have no resources. And I'm coming back to the team and saying, what can we do? So. Um, we started decide, you know, discussing it, and we came up with what are the consequences of not having a new faculty orientation. Um, and this keeps jumping on me. I don't know why that's doing that. Doesn't like these things, so they're not feeling welcomed. So what happens when you not feel welcomed? I'm, I'm gonna. Get, <laughs> let's see if I can get this to work. It, this is sway. It's not. Um, PowerPoint, I don't know if y'all ever use Sway. It's a Microsoft program. I like it better, but not when it's doing that. Uh, so um, so they're not feeling welcome. So what happens when they're not feeling welcome? They don't want to come back. Why would you want to come back to a place that you know doesn't even give you any support and, and they just throw you in a classroom? We've found teacher retention is about as important as student retention. Yeah, I'm, and I am coming to that. Um, you know, you have an unsatisfied employee, you have somebody who lacks motivation. If you don't have a teacher who has motivation, like this is speaker here, she sounds like she's awesome and I wish I saw your presentation. Um, you know, you, 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 your students feel less motivated and, and that's what we're all there for is being, motiv you know, getting those students motivated, getting them to stay in school and, and continue on. Um, you also have frustrated supervisors, you know, program leads. Well, this teacher, this teacher didn't do this. This teacher didn't do that. Well, did you tell them they needed to do that? Did you have some discussion? Do you have a mentor? Well, yes or no. Or, well, we took the mentor, but they decided that they needed to go do something else. Um, you know, and that they didn't want to talk to, you know, they didn't have time to talk. That's, you know, always the big thing. I don't have time. Well, you know, sometimes we have to take time. And then we experience a high turnover. Um, and just understand this is still in the process. We're still getting this process down, but um, hopefully some of this stuff that we've learned uh, will help. So why did we choose to implement a new faculty or, or, uh, onboarding process? Um, help provide the support. We definitely want to have that done. Um, another reason that, and I may have this later in the presentation, I don't remember, it's been a few days since I've done this, but um, we have new student orientation. We have mandatory new student orientation. I don't know if your schools do that. Why don't we have mandatory faculty orientation? Fall in service is the only time we orient our faculty. So we have to look at it as the same as what we're going to do with students. We also want to disseminate the information and conduct inquiries and improve the knowledge and practice of Klamath Community College instruction. We have certain expectations of our faculty, but we're not relaying them like David was just giving with his example. We're not relaying that expectation. We're just putting them in the classroom and saying, okay, well, you figure it out. Some, hopefully somebody will tell you what you need to do. I forgot to tell the dean that I'm having problems with a helicopter parent, and now I'm getting chewed out for that. That's not okay. That's not fair to the faculty member. And guess what's going to happen? David's going to say, you know what? After that, I'm not sure that I want to do this anymore. Um, we want to stimulate and, uh, and enable development of innovative teaching strategies and emerging technologies. Again, we, we're trying to be more innovative. All of us are. It's not just KCC. We have new technologies coming in all the time. Again, each time that you meet with this instructor, it's going to cost you time, money, their time, their patience. So you want to make sure that we, keep the, we retain those teachers as well. Um, we want to talk to them. Maybe they're coming in with some fresh ideas. We want to have those faculties with fresh ideas and help us improve our school as well. 
and a lot of our um, adjunct instructors are business community people. So they're, they're experiencing something that the educational side may not experience. They may find different technologies that they can use in the classroom that we're unaware of. Because we're very focused on the education, they're not. We have a lot of trades. We have people yeah. that are coming in who have trained firefighters before in the field, but have never done it standing in front of a classroom. And so they have all kinds of issues that we never really considered before. And a number of other trades have those problems. So, yeah, and we also want to make sure that we affirm Klamath Community College's, um, you know, uh, teaching excellence. We want to have excellent teachers. And if, if we're not retaining them, we're not, con we're not giving our students the best um, experience and the best education. So um, you can see a statistics here, new employees who attended a well Structured onboarding program were 69% more likely to remain at a company or school for up to three years. And had, um, so you, well, you can read here. Um, so with the standard onboarding process, 50% greater new hire retention rate. Again, that saves your school money. We want to make sure that, you know, we are all poor. We're all cash poor as an institution. So each time, like I said earlier, we train, it costs money every time we train. So we want to make sure that we um, eliminate that, um, that, that cost. So here's our new onboarding process that we started. We actually met with our HR department and said, hey, we want to start knowing who the new hires are. We didn't even know as a team who was coming in. There was no, no all of a sudden we get a call or somebody says, hey, can you meet with this instructor? A week before class and get them ready to go so we talked to HR and we said hey is there a way that we can like find out who's been hired and what classes they're going to teach so we can prepare and meet with them so we did um, HR actually has I don't know if you uh, it's a flow it's a, a program that was written into the HR program that every time they hired a new adjunct or a new faculty member we get an email to the Center for Teaching and Learning with their name, whether they're part-time or full-time, what their start date is, and what their department is. And that has been really useful. And then this also goes to our um, academic affairs uh, assist, admin assistant, because she then tells us if the adjunct is teaching. Because one of the things we did learn is um, we get adjuncts in, and then we say, hey, come on in, and we'll train with you and show you how to use these programs, and blah, blah. And then they're thinking they're teaching. And we found out, oh, they may not be teaching <laughs> and we've had some confusion and so these people got a little bit upset you know because then now we've just created a situation we shouldn't have created so we found that out within what the first adjunct we did that to I don't know why this keeps jumping like that yeah, we had an adjunct come in and somebody I think was just recruiting for the future friend of a friend we might need you to teach classes someday that got translated to she would be teaching classes very soon she needed training oh. we couldn't find her in the personnel system but we went ahead and trained her anyway right and then started finding out that you know, she doesn't have classes and on some level we're almost making a contractual promise so yes and a number of it was horrible. It was embarrassing. It really was. It was horrible and embarrassing. And then she d decided she's not teaching for KCC anymore because of that. So, you know, it wasn't a great loss. I'm sorry to say, I don't mean that in a bad way. It just was, you know, it just may not have been the right fit anyway, but it was just really made our department look thankfully we're young. So we kind of got away with it a little bit, but also, um, so like I said, the admin assistant does let us know that they're coming in and what they're going to be teaching. I, as soon as we get that information, we send out a pre-formatted email. It has all our names, our email addresses, and it says what we do, how to contact us. We also have a form for them to fill out that tells us about their teaching experience. It's on our, our Microsoft forms. I, I can bring that up if somebody's interested. But basically says, have you ever taught before? Have you ever used an LMS before? Um, what is your experience? When can you meet with us? Because we require every incoming instructor to meet with us. And so, um, and that has worked really well. We have finally, ha we're getting some feedback from faculty saying, 
you know, from our, our current faculty as well as the incoming faculty, I feel supported. I feel really happy that I, I know where to go when I need help. So the pre-formatted email basically, like I said, is a welcome mass message. It says here's who we are, this is what we do, who to contact for what, how to get help, how to put in a support case for the Center for Teaching and Learning. This keeps jumping on me. Um, and then, um, you know, and then they set up a time to meet with us. Also included in that email is the new faculty um, orientation guide. We actually put together a 16 page, I don't know why this keeps jumping in, it's really upsetting me. Put together about, it's not a 16 page, but um, it's, it's quite the faculty orientation book. So, so like a lot of new faculty, when they come in, they may come in from another state, especially if they're full-time faculty. It tells them where to go, you know, here, you know, like when you're in the hotel and you got that little book and it says, here's where you can eat, here's where the, you know, blah, blah. So we tell them like where to get childcare, where to get uh, food, where to get groceries from, where your prescription places are. So we have a nice little book. Plus we give an overview of Klamath Community College, where all the departments are, who we are. And that's all on our campus, LMS. And it's public facing so anybody we can just link to it and anybody can look at it at any time we've done the same thing with the K kcc faculty handbook it's also on canvas it's fa public facing so they can go in and look at it but now they know exactly where to go so it's really been a very good thing we also have a checklist we put together a checklist for the faculty um what to expect your first day actually let me if you don't mind i'll, I'll show you our our website here. We also have a website uh, for, um, sorry, I can't talk and type at the same time. Well, we were finding out the uh, paper and all that really wasn't working very well, it wasn't getting updated well. So we just, since we are mm. uh, expert, and I don't keep to say we're experts in Kansas, we have some ability with Canvas to yes. just put all this into Canvas and make it accessible to anybody that's within the institution or we can also make it public facing. So let's see. Well let me see what we got going on here. So this is not a great computer just so you guys know and I'm not I should have just used my own. Probably would have been easier. Oh gee. Okay, so this is our page that we've created. We give a link to that as well, um, but I want to find, we've changed some things around here. Mm -mm -mm. So there's new faculty orientation. Oh, where was I going with this? Now I've totally forgot. Was I going to Canvas? Um, well, here's our orientation survey, um, just so you can see what it looks like. Was I going to Canvas? Okay. Sorry guys, it's way too early in the morning, so um, I appreciate your patience while I'm figuring myself out as well. Can I ask a you yeah. may, please. So one thing that happens to us in my institution is that we have faculty who are hired days before they graduate. Yeah. No, <laughs> and so if, if have you run into that, and, and if so, like how do you feel with it? Because it's mm -hmm. really helpful program for them to engage mm -hmm. with before they. It's kind of like one of those models where if you can follow the model, it works wonderfully, but nobody ever can, you know, we never have time to follow the model. Uh, we do it as best we can. We have to compress this, but we pretty much make it everyone at the college understand that we've got to meet with new adjuncts. Uh, or new faculty. We also have faculty come on the campus two weeks before the semester begins, but that's still kind of a minimal time, especially if they're still shuffling. What class, you know, you have new faculty that need to teach four classes or three classes, and they're still trying to shuffle around which one of those three are they going to be teaching. Um, we try to meet with them as quickly as possible. I try to work with them to pull things up and put things together. Um, the increase in the sandbox in Canvas, as soon as we find out that they're even going to be there, and I try to meet with them and map out a little bit about what they're teaching in the course, and also find out if they've taught on another LMS or another university and be able to see if they can pull that in. 
because they're a lot more comfortable with their content if they're kind of recognizing what their content is. But at some point, it's just basically not good. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have a week, and you're trying to bring them into the whole faculty process at a new college, um, especially if they're teaching as grad students at the university, and they're now coming to a new college. You're trying to get them on the LMS. You're trying to get them comfortable with a new classroom. You're trying to tell them where their classroom is. And along with all the additional faculty duties that they're going to be responsible for in addition to this teaching. So yes, I, we don't have any magic solution. No. So. And the other part of it is, is DE stu uh, faculty are even more difficult. We don't have that same luxury because you can't just pull them in onto Canvas. And, you know, trying to even meet with them has been like, I have I sent out an email, that email that I was telling earlier to one faculty member. And she's like, I don't even know who you are and what you do. And, and then all of a sudden I'm like, well, here, I sent you this email, but I'll send it to you again. And then now she'll email me like once a week. Oh, I need to do this and I do need to do that. So again, we, we've got to, we're still working. Like I said, we're still very in, in the, the beginnings of doing this process. And so we're open, like from everybody else that you get some, you know, if you find something that works for you as well, that maybe we can share it so we can, you know. Um, yeah, but we do have faculty that say, no, you don't. We, I don't. Yeah. I'm located 300 miles right. away. There's no way that I can use any of your services. I completely know how to do distance education, and it's kind of one of those you just want to go, okay, you know, go forth and do it. But by the same token, it's, there's Zoom. We can pull up screenshots, and we can build courses for them, even though they're remotely, if they make themselves accessible. And so we've had kind of mixed results with some of this, but we are working with means to get them to, you know, we're looking at giving them examples of this is what it looks like if we don't, this is what it looks like if we do, and we need you to do the enforcement. Because if we start doing enforcement, it's going to get rather difficult for us to also make suggestions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can't, yeah. We want to be and we are. Cops, we want the deans to be right. Back. And, and we're, we're still struggling with the, uh, we just went through our third dean on one of the positions, so hopefully this one stays for, <laughs> maybe they didn't get an orientation either. But this is the checkoff list that I was talking about, is just, they can actually print this, this is just for them to see on the, on the system here. So they actually get told exactly where they're going, who they're meeting with, and then what their first day is going to look like. So again, we're working with um, other departments, and that's going to be part of our goals here. But um, we, we are working with other departments to make this a, an actual thing, an actual orientation each term. Luckily, it's not like with, you know, um, staff where you have to, you know, it's, it's, we have staff coming in and throughout the term, it's usually just adjuncts you know, or new faculty at the beginning of each term. So um, we also have a tra training course. We give every faculty member a sandbox that they can go in and play in. And, and like I was talking earlier, we do have city labs, which really enhances the program. So we kind of give them an idea of what that looks like. And that's what the sandbox is good for, because it doesn't destroy anything else in Canvas. Um, so we do meet with the, the um, faculty member. We have an, oh, I spelled assessment wrong. Sorry about that. Um, assessment and curriculum coordinator, she is or, well, she was, we, she just left us. Um, she kind of goes over the syllabus, how to get the COGS, how to get the PLOs, what the PLOs are, what the ILOs are, SLOs. Hopefully everybody knows what those are. Institutional learning outcomes, student learning outcomes, course learning outcomes, what's the other one? Uh, and then, yeah, course content and outcome guides. So we do standardize all of that. We do have the institutional syllabus, which has a lot of that. So that's part of what she or that individual is doing is meeting with the fact that uh, department and then they come over and they talk with Ian or LMS administrator. And so they, there they get to understand what the canvas is. They come in and they sit down with him. They learn how to copy their course over. Um, and then they get a city labs introduction. So that's kind of coming up. It's not really what's happening right now, but we are um, going to be implementing city labs. We just have a pilot group going right now. Now, one of the goals we do have here is to follow up every one, three, six, and ten weeks with the faculty. This is super important. 
because we, you know, we go through the orientation process and then we go in and then we, then we do the same thing that's been done to them before. Okay, you've been trained, you're good to go. Give them three weeks, come in and say, hey, is there something that was happening that you didn't know about or is there any questions about the technology, the yada yada that we can help you with? Then come back again in six weeks and say, okay, especially because it's midterms, do you know how to do your grades? Do you know how to do this? Are you comfortable with what's going on in the classroom? And then the 10 week, right before finals, is there anything we can help you with? How did this go? How did that go? This gives this faculty member the feeling of being supported. Now they know somebody is there looking out for them. So this is really super important. And this is like the student you know, orientation. We want to retain good teachers. And you're going to retain good teachers by doing something like this. So the instructional designer, um, we're looking at building a tip book for new instructors. We have certain courses that are not uh, built on the semester level if they're for specific training or certification. But for a lot of them, we have them built on a 10 week period, two or three days a week. We can lay a lot of this out, give them so that they're filling in their lesson plan pretty much for the day, that they have outcomes for the course available to them in the course that they can even look at it, space to make weekly outcomes and readings, what they're going to do, discussion during the whole mm -hmm. thing. That's basically they can fill in boxes and delete whatever they have. And so we're working at building that for them. Mm -hmm. uh, we're also using City Labs a lot to make it look a lot more attractive for them, and uh, also get okay. their institutional syllabus and course syllabus of what it can. So I walked them through that, but I also just walked them through this is Canvas, this is what an LMS, you know, depending on how they answer your questions, this is what an LMS is, this is why you use an LMS. And sometimes I'm doing that, sometimes it's, oh, I used to use Blackboard, and it's like, well, these are a couple of the differences between Blackboard, but this is how it lays out, this is how you should do it. And this is how we want it done, because we want students not to be hunting for things. <laughs> so we're looking at trying to get some of the courses designed, and so the venues to be as minimal as possible, and using uh, city labs, and also making it so that students don't have to hunt. We're trying to standardize the courses. For courses, we don't want them to have to remember where things are hidden on each one. So I train as best I can in that short period of time, but I've also found that with some of the better instructors, they do come around once a week. We try to maintain one-on-one -on -one time. We try to maintain office hours. We try to have an open door policy so that they can come in. And one of the, I guess it's an innovation, I haven't done that in the other places, but got a very large monitor, mm -hmm. two keyboards, two mics. We, I reduced it down to one keyboard and one mouse because there was somebody who started fighting me with my <laughs> son. Three, but it allows us to sit down with the instructor in a quiet space and start talking about finding out their course and seeing it up on the screen so that we're not both trying to look at a tiny little monitor. And that's been a nice thing. Yeah. Run them through quizzes, run them how quizzes are set up in Canvas, run them through rubrics, why they need to do rubrics, and just basically give them, you know, one on one course of time. And then again, the follow-ups. The follow-ups are really important. And that's one of the things when I was researching about doing faculty orientation is that that follow-up is super important because they may not know, well, what is the new thing? They don't know what they don't know. And so they start finding out what they don't know as they're going through the course. Hey, I have a smart board and I don't know how to change it because we have the, the ICAP. I don't know how to change it to the whiteboard. Maybe that was something that got missed in the training. So at least we have some, um, you know, we can come back and say, hey, okay, that this is how you do it. It's really awesome. So as the Center for Teaching and Learning lead and the innovation trainer, I'm basically responsible for teaching everybody how to use the classroom technology. Um, one of the things we're doing, and, and David's going to be talking about this this afternoon with the Center for Teaching and Learning, how we built a Center for Teaching and Learning, we have a mock classroom now. Or we will. It's almost coming. <laughs> And um, so we can actually do the training of the classroom technology without having to be inside the classroom, but it's still a classroom setup. It's the same exact equipment, and then we can have a nice quiet space because what we have also found with the faculty orientation is we take a classroom and we're going to sit in there with a faculty member for over an hour, 
and a class needs to come in. And that really, it upsets, you know, it just upsets the whole flow of everything. Or the computers aren't set up. Yeah, or yeah, we've had that as well. And also, one of the other things we're doing is mandatory professional development. So our department is responsible for professional development. We do a lot of trainings. And so we do, we do require, um, I think it's every year, there's six required mandatory workshops that they have to attend. It doesn't matter. There's like certain ones that have to, they have to attend like early alerts and, um, you know, I, I can't think of the other ones off the, then their deans get informed and the deans take care of it. We are not allowed to tell them that they have to be there. So, you know, we have limited power, but the power comes from the deans. Of, yeah, yes. You know, and, and that's fine. I'd rather the deans be the bad guys. So, you know, so, but once they're told, and one of the other things we do with those trainings is we do give certificates so that they can put that in their file for evaluations. It's really kind of important to have that. I also go over the campus software, what software we have available, like Net Support, where, you know, you can watch all the computer monitors or, you know, a smart notebook or anything like that. Um, and then the Center for Teaching and Learning Equipment. So we're going to have uh, part, you know, again, we, we're getting a natural physical center for teaching and learning. So we have a lot of equipment coming in, recording equipment, because um, one of the things about instructor presence that we're really big on is, is you know, doing videos and introduction videos and stuff like that. So we're going to be teaching them all of that. Um, again, the follow-ups. You know, we, we definitely got to continue. I mean, that's one thing I like to stress. The last thing that the Center for Teaching and Learning Lead will do is a six-month employee orientation. So we don't just orient once. We're going to orient them twice. Because, again, even though we meet with them week one, week three, week six, and week ten, we're going to go in and we're going to meet with them again in six months. Because who knows what happens in six months? There may be something else that comes up that we didn't address in that first year or first term. So what have we learned? Work with incoming faculty as soon as possible. As soon as you get that information, you know that adjunct or that full-time faculty is coming, you contact them right away. That's the first sense of support. They know that somebody's there looking out for them. All of a sudden, I'm getting emails, and I feel like now I'm part of the KCC community. Share all necessary resources with faculty. So make sure. If you have a problem with this, please go see here. If you are having a problem with that, go see your dean. If you're having a problem with this, they will know who the, what the resources are. Give them an overview of your website. Do you have an internal SharePoint? Make sure they know where to find the resources to get help. Continue meeting with uh, the new faculty. Ian's really good about this. Um, sometimes I come by his office and his light's out and he's not in his office and I'm like, He's out, actually out meeting with faculty. He, is, he has really built a nice relationship for our, our team with faculty because of that. Be out there. Be the face of, of your institution. Work with your deans. Again, you know, that's, I think, sometimes a little bit of a struggle. Um, in, in our situation, our deans are kind of lateral to our positions. And so, um, but they are the bad guys because they are the supervisors of the faculty. So you may not have the power to tell the faculty what to do, but their deans do. Use your deans as best as you can. Get a good relationship with them. Work with your faculty senate. That is one thing that we found really, really useful. They actually help pay for some of our, our professional development. We have lunch and learns. So they'll come in and they'll, um, we'll have a training and um, they'll pay for the lunch. And it's really great, and the faculty love it. So, and we've also gotten some great. We've dealt with the person who was back in the Senate. Mm -hmm. We had a sit down meeting we usually do once a month. What training do they need? Um, mm -hmm. We're getting some of that from the deans, but we're also getting that directly from the faculty. So, the kind of ideas that are going to hopefully help the instructors a little bit more. One of the first things was we were presenting on topics, but we weren't all the way out of the lab. Right. And so there are things we would show them, and it would just go right on by. You know, they'd eat their sandwich and go, okay. <laughs> and then go off and not try it. Um, she's suggested that we do labs, and mm -hmm. we found those are working. Very, very better. useful. And we're also going to have the center so we can kind of start pulling the metal with some Popcorn. <laughs> so I've got a popcorn maker. But 
the, the point of this is basically work with all your departments. Don't, don't get, you know, I hate using the term I've been using a lot in the last few days is don't be in your own silo. Reach out to the other departments, business office, um, deans, um, yeah, you know, new, new student know orientation, um, you know, your first year experiences. Anybody you can think of that's going to make this employee feel more welcome because if I can say to them, hey, I know HR is responsible and this is the actual individual you want to talk to, and then that person goes and says, well, this person told, you know, Edith told me to talk to you, they're like, oh, okay, you know, and they're more apt to talk with the individual. So please don't, you know, create that silo and feel you can't go outside of your space. The, the one thing that, that a lot of people do get comfortable with is staying there. And branching out is really super important, especially for a center for teaching and learning, because we are involved in every aspect of everything. So, yeah, I hope you to know they're getting paid. yeah. <laughs> how do I get paid? <laughs> yeah, if they moved and stuff like that. What happens if they have a suicidal student in their class? Safety. It's just everything. Again, it's like new student orientation, right? So we tell the students, these are the things, these are your resources. Just think of it like that, except for adults. And be patient. Be patient. Everybody is different. Everybody learns different. Not everything is going to happen overnight. I would love for everything to be working wonderfully, but it's just not going to. And we also have the information Yeah. So our future goals, um, provide weekly, institute a new faculty staff orientation day. So again, as I said earlier about the whole FERPA thing, our, our HR department hands them that piece of paper and they say, okay, here, sign it. You know, you're a mandatory reporter, you're part of the, the FERPA, you know, you got to do all of these things. So we're actually going to start working with, we're going to be meeting with HR when I get back, actually, and we're going to start working to get both faculty and staff oriented. So it's going to be a joint effort. Um, then we, we would do the training, like on FERPA. Okay, you got your FERPA paper, and this is why you need to do these things. Our CTL Lunch and Learns, we kind of talked about that already. Um, it's really super successful. It is a good thing to do. The round table is something new that we're going to be introducing. And again, this is going to be for new faculty orientation. And basically all it is is we're going to sit down and say, okay, our new um, ILO, our new institutional learning outcome is about teamwork. Let's sit down and talk about what does that mean. And we're just going to sit around and have coffee and stuff like that. We're going to do weekly professional development workshops. So um, we're still working on this and we're struggling with this, but one of the things that one of the ideas is, is let them drive what it is. What do they want to talk about? We're not going to present a topic. It'll be like, oh, okay, what is it you need help with today? Kind of a one-on-one -on -one thing. It's, it, those work real well. That's because they feel like they're getting individualized help. Um, we're going to do peer-to-peer -peer mentoring. And as faculty do come in, they are supposed to have a peer mentor. It doesn't always work that way, but we also want our master teachers to teach the incoming faculty their successes so that maybe we can promote that even more so throughout the college. And again, that gives the faculty member, the incoming faculty member, a feeling of support. Um, align our training with Klamath Community College's annual focus. So this year we're focusing on student engagement. Um, I'm sure everybody is focusing on student engagement because we have student retention. Also know that the more you retain faculty, the more you're going to retain students. Because what if you have a faculty member who's just amazing, but he doesn't feel supported and the students love him, and then they come back and the next year he's not there, you know, and their friends want to take the class from him. They may be a little bit more reluctant about taking classes with another instructor. Um, Again, we're going to work with uh, human resources, creating a new faculty employee orientation at the beginning of each term. Um, we're going to continue our fall in service for new faculty and employee and employees orientations. And then again, we're going to work with the deans to establish professional development training programs. And that's just, again, that's to support the faculty members so that they don't walk in feeling like, I don't know what I'm doing. Please help me. So. So basically, to wrap it all up and put it all into perspective, you want to support your incoming faculty. You want to make sure they know how to find their resources. They, want, they need as much help as any incoming student. So that's the way you can kind of look at it, is we have new student orientation. Let's do new faculty orientation.
So that is what I have to say. So if you have any questions, um, we're here. Otherwise, what do you do? <laughs> yeah. So as far as the professional development and mm -hmm. workshops, was it your idea to require it and you convincing that they should enforce it? Or did they say, no. we support this and you all are going to provide it? The first the first part of that. We actually started, yeah, we actually, actually I went to, I, I'm a director of reports at the VP of Academic Affairs, and that was one of the things that we came up with is, is you know, you have this whole team, well, this whole team, <laughs> who, who have this knowledge, who are going to go out and research your topics for you, and nobody was taking advantage of it. And then they would say, well, we don't know how to do this, and we don't know how to do that. And we're like, we just did a training on that last week, and one person showed up. You know, and you know, I'm sure if you're you're in, you know you do work, your own workshops at your institution, how difficult it is to get faculty to come. You know, and we couldn't even get we got two, three, four faculty members that we actually got to come this year to the the Northwest E1. We've actually flipped the script a little bit on the workshops, and it's worked really well for us, where we put out what we call our menu. Okay. And departments invite us. Oh, nice. And they choose. Which workshop they want. Okay. okay. How successful has that been? I'm just. Been really has it? And awesome. And we go to them usually during their already scheduled conference meeting. Okay. Do our workshop. Oh, that's a non idea, and so, I appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> well, we kind of have so, the menu laid out, so it was really yeah. difficult for us to, you know, pass it around. Do you around. have mandatory shops, that, workshops that they have to do, though? We like. Don't have anything required. Okay. Yeah, just, these aren't really on board. <laughs> well, like early alerts are really especially important for us at KCC. Um, we're at a we're in a very rural area. I don't know if you know Klamath at all. You know, so being in a very rural area, a lot of our students are also very low income, a lot of homeless students and stuff like that. So um, early alerts is a really hot topic for us. So that is always mandatory for every single faculty member. Period. But it is a problem, and, and I wonder, do you suffer from some of the things that we've suffered from where it's like, I'm, I'm an adjunct, I've taught, but they don't see me as an instructor, so they, I'm not validated in their eyes when I'm telling them the same things that they might hear from another instructor that has been teaching for 20 years? We don't run into that as much because, uh, because we're an academic health center, our okay. adjuncts are MDs. Okay, okay. <laughs> They, they have this other level of respect, even if they don't have classes. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> I'm jealous. <laughs> oh, that, yeah. It, and it is, it's, I mean, I, I appreciate it. And I wish, you know, um, we're trying to change that mindset because actually, you know, we're the second CTL team at, at KCC. Um, and the first one initially, um, there was some bad blood that had happened. So we're still building some bridges from that as well. So that's why this all came about too, is, is you know, the, the word was already getting out that don't go see them, they won't support you. So that's, you know, that's where this all came from. So hopefully that we're reaching the faculty as they're coming in before they hear the bad things. <laughs> and I used to work at Texas Tech University Health Science Center, so. <laughs> there are some that are a pain, but yeah, you don't have any issues. Uh, two questions. Sure. Um, one, can you give me any idea about rough hours that for for the training? So, how many professional development hours are allocated to actually go and for them to do these things? Uh, they I, now, as far as their contract, I'm not sure. They get they get um, they're required to do a certain amount of professional development. Of course, what that is, I couldn't tell you. But we do fulfill four hours. We're requiring four hours for the orientation now. So um, in the future. So this is going to happen probably next term where we're going to work with faculty and staff. So we're going to bring, be bringing in staff as well. So even if they've been working for two or three months or two or three weeks, they're going to come to this orientation with um, the faculties, and then we're going to kick them out and then finish up with the, the faculty members. Gotcha. Maybe you know. if you were to just take a look at like some of the one on work, one work you do, or, or if, you know, we had one on ones, and I've sat in the lab for an hour and read. You know, yeah. Just popping up on some of my ID reading that I really want to <laughs> do, but by the same token, it's not helping. Well, when we, we found that feeding them. 
Yeah, that's. They're all like grad students. Well, <laughs> you just feed them, and, and they're happy. And they have a tendency to arrive a little bit better. Well, but the one-on-one -on -one sessions that we do have, so we do do them during the in-service. That's like the the best um, attended, believe it or not. Um, but we have lab hours. We don't really keep track of what their professional development, how many hours they need to have. That's up to you know their dean and and their. Um, you know, themselves and their peer mentors. Um, but we try to provide as much professional development. So usually it's one or two a week that we do these sessions. But her idea was really great. So we're going to let these guys come in. So um, if you have any other questions, I have cards. Or did you add another question real oh, quick? Yeah, quick follow-up. Sure. Was, uh, so all this follow-up work, I think, is great with going back mm -hmm. to instruction. Do you do that manually to like, you know, using just regular email or are you tracking that? Um, well, again, that's what we're going to be instituting. Okay. Um, I'll let you know how we decide to do right. it. But I think it's going to be more face-to-face, -face, yeah. um, unless they're just an ad student. Um, you know, so a uh, distant ed instructor. If they're just an ed, it'll probably just be email, not so much Zoom, um, because like I said, half the time they're like, I'm too busy, uh, no, or 300 miles away, I can't, uh, no, you know, so that type of thing. But um, I, I'll be curious. I'll let you know if you know how we wind up with it. Hopefully by next year, I probably won't do this again next year. You know this presentation. Maybe I will. Maybe from everything that we've learned. But it, it is a really. I'll let you know how how well it works for us. But I do also recommend like what Ian does is have somebody just walking around and meeting with faculty. It's it's he he gets questions all the time. He has a tendency to stay in the CPO. Yeah. He has a tendency to wander around. He is. He is. Well, I used to go out and meet in that one in the lobby area, and I would have you know faculty come up and walk by my office six times, then meeting in that one, and they come up and talk to me about their course, and it's like. So make yourself known. Yeah. You know, that's. That was a really interesting thing. It was either Harvard or MIT, they built their faculty curriculum structure. Uh, and then in the alley, in the walkway to get to the building that they had to teach in, they built all these student maker spaces so that the faculty had to pass the students at their maker spaces to get to their offices. Or oh, that's classes. great. <laughs> and it's just that intentional environmental design. Yeah. Right? yeah. And like, how can you I like environmental design? design. That's awesome. <laughs> Yeah. That's a word we can use. I like that. I like that a lot. So, and um, if you're interested, I have cards, like I said. If you want to email, I'd be glad to email with you and let you know where we're at. So, I appreciate you coming. And I'm sorry it wasn't as energetic this yeah. morning, but I know everybody's feeling the same as me. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, well, Dave has given his card out, so. <laughs> Do you? Do you? Are you sure? <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys, again. I appreciate it. I appreciate you listening to me for a while. <laughs> All right. Thank you for the water, by the way.